you get a face It's fascinating to observe what the mirror does But when I dine it for the wall and outside a place I belong to the blank generation And I can take it or leave it each time Well, I belong to the generation But I can take it or leave it each time My name is Christina Callis Saritzaglu, and I'm co founder and manager of Philly AIDS Thrift. And I think that Christina is a very passionate and caring individual, and, and she just, it just like oozes from her, you know? Would it be alright if I bring a box of pretzels in? And then Christina says, that would be great, you know? Tom's like, you kidding? I said, no. Uh, my name is Tom Brennan. I'm the manager of the store, one of the founders of the store with Christine and four other people. It was uh, about six and a half years ago. Uh, it was me and a few friends. Um, we're longtime AIDS activists and we're also lovers of junk. And so we merged the two together and uh, that's kind of what we came up with. Uh, we've had friends, um, you know, that have, uh, have died from the disease, uh, friends who are living with the disease. And so it was uh, something that's, you know, close to our hearts and something that hasn't gone away and we still want to do something to change that. In the 90s I was a, a manager of a gay club in Philly called Kurtz and of course uh, a lot of the people that worked in that club are no longer with us and a lot of the people that were in that club uh, weren't with us by the end of the 90s. We give all of our proceeds to the AIDS Fund. The AIDS Fund are the people that do the annual AIDS walk every year in Philadelphia. And they, what they do is they take the walk money and our money, and at this point we give them $10,000 a month. Um, they combine the two and distribute that to 30 AIDS organizations here in Philadelphia. So it's a great thing because it, it, it covers all forms of care because all those uh, AIDS service organizations are focusing on different things. So mm -hmm. it's, it reaches prevention, outreach, case management, you name it. Education is important because a lot of money of this goes to the kids to let them to be educated, that it's not good to not have unsafe sex. And uh, I don't know if she mentioned, yesterday we had the, uh, the testing mobile was here. Every other week we have um, the Mazzoni Center, uh, they have a mobile testing unit and they park in front of the store and they do rapid HIV testing uh, in front of the store, so that's another service that we try to provide. I think it's really incredible that we donate to an umbrella organization that not only takes it on for you know a specific um, task, a specific destination, but to 30 you know plus organizations in this city of Philadelphia that all do different things and activism and outreach with you know HIV and AIDS. We give vouchers to the 30 AIDS organizations that uh, we distribute our money to. The ones that have case management programs, they receive these vouchers. So let's say there's somebody who's HIV positive and they may uh, really be struggling financially. They might not have a job. They may have just gotten out of jail. If they're eligible for the vouchers, they bring them here and get $50 worth of clothing, kitchenware, and things like that. There's the opportunity to really like, in educate people about our cause and um, and help people. Staff people are hired to do specific things. So, you know, Adam is our assistant manager, but we hired him because he's worked for other uh, retail places and, and thrift stores as well. So he knows, he has an eye for being able to price things. Same with Christian. Christian can pick up a can of soda and say that's worth a dollar, and then he can pick something else up and be like, wow, that's a Tibetan coin purse from like 1302. That's, he has the skills that we need to do that. Uh, and the people that price the clothing, they're well versed in vintage clothing, name brand stuff, what some skate punk's gonna wear, what the hipsters are gonna wear, you know what I mean? And so it's like 
we hire them specifically because of their knowledge of these items. My name's Brooks Banker, and I'm clothing supervisor at Affiliate Swift. I don't have any, you know, education per se, but I, my mom boot, uh, owned boutiques in Vermont where I'm from when I was growing up, so I've been around fashion my entire life, and I've always loved clothes, just naturally, and I've been a lover of thrift stores my entire life, so, you know, not, it just seemed like a natural fit for me to be involved with clothes. You open a bag and there's someone's story you know and it even if it's filled with stuff that we can't necessarily sell in the store and you know it's even dirty it's it still is somebody's history in life that you see in this bag and it's exceptional when you actually find things that are really beautiful in it which is often the case and clothes that we can make money from and clothes that people you know think are hip and fun and awesome so Basically, I'm in charge of uh, not only processing the clothing, donations that we get at the store, but also pricing clothes, um, as well as kind of being with the volunteers uh, in the store, um, delegating tasks to them, because we're very much volunteer-based, obviously. So just being in charge of, of the tasks to do with clothing that need to be uh, done in the store. I started as a volunteer in January, and um, I just loved doing it and I just, um, I wasn't really working that much, like I just had, I had a couple little jobs, whatever, so I was spending a lot of time here and it was fun and I was useful and um, I just felt very comfortable and soon um, I became good at, I was doing fabrics and linens and I just fit into the, our little team up here, so then they hired me. My job is technically the clothes, like pricer and processor. But it's also like a lot of volunteer organization and just kind of working with the volunteers and keeping them busy and making sure everything's running smoothly. We have 12 staff people, uh, which is wonderful because in the beginning it was just uh, a couple of us here in the store pricing everything, running the register, every single thing. Uh, and, um, and we have probably over 100 and... I'm going to say over 150 volunteers that keep the whole place going seven days a week. With our core staff, we can keep the store going, but without the volunteers, we couldn't keep the shelves full. Um, it's, uh, it's just that simple that all those donated man hours are what make this place doable and effective and successful. Uh, my name is Molly Cristiano, and I started volunteering here in September. I actually got a postcard in the mail that was left at my house. Um, they were sending around little notices about volunteering, so that's how I first heard about it. I actually didn't know Affiliate Thrift until I wanted to become more involved in my community of Philadelphia, and I was looking for volunteer work, and I had friends just say, Affiliate Thrift is a thrift store that's volunteer run, I'm pretty sure. And so I just came in one day uh, with the intention of volunteering, mm -hmm. and I just didn't even go to the back of the store. I signed up immediately <laughs> on a yellow application uh, to volunteer here, and then I quickly became very invested. I think the majority of the reason people want to volunteer here is because they really want to be involved in our cause. Um, I think that people, when they decide what to do with their time, is oftentimes want to do it within their community. Um, and they want to come here and be in a really awesome space that does really awesome work. And, uh, you know, we've created that. We've created a really cool space that people can come and be involved in. Helping AIDS victims and being a part of the cause is something that I'm really passionate about and I also just really love volunteer work so that was one of the reasons that I decided to volunteer. I think it's a multitude of reasons. Some people HIV and AIDS has had an impact in their lives somehow and they want to do something to give back to that cause. Um, there are other people that they just moved to the city and they want to get to meet people and they want to get to know people. Uh, I like helping out and uh, I get so emotional. So, you know. <laughs> and uh, I think that, that's enough for right now. <laughs> A great mix of people and I always tell people when I interview them it's like you're gonna be around people that you probably would have never hung out with in your life and uh, you're probably gonna like them a lot. Everyone here is so nice and welcoming and because I mean I didn't know anyone here when I came here and I feel like they all welcomed me with those arms. This store is literally my second family. Um, without these people I don't know where I'd be today and that's sincere. I've had a lot of problems and these guys are they're my family. I mean, I'm here every day. Christina's like, where'd you come from, you know? And I help with the move. 
and I've been, and they can't get rid of me. I told them you stuck with me. I'm part of the family. Anna Marie is my name, and I live down here in Philly, right literally around the corner from Philly Aids Thrift. I uh, was a shopper here for many years. Uh, I also uh, volunteer almost daily here. Uh, I generally call myself a, a, an ambassador, however, instead of a um, actual volunteer because I spread the word, which is to love uh, this you store. Know, obviously, the job itself is really awesome. I mean, I, I love my job in regards to working with clothes, working with people is awesome for me. I love people. and But then on top of that, the whole concept of this place is a nonprofit organization that donates ten thousand dollars a month to Philly AIDS Fund, and the fact that we are involved in community—it's all about community. We're out there in the community, every community, gay, straight, green, punk, whatever. You know what I mean? So we try to be a presence, and we try to connect with with everyone, because that's who we are—is everyone. Our tagline is shop, donate, volunteer, and those are the ways that you can support us. So if you can't afford to buy something, you can always volunteer here. If you can't have the time, donate something here. We're going to keep doing it until uh, we don't have to do it anymore. And that would be the end of the disease. Mm -hmm. Adam, how come you don't want to talk on camera? He's eating. Now you're eating on camera. I'm wanted in like 12 states. It just gets out. <laughs> what if I'm telling the truth? I don't know, I don't like cameras.